Eight years of screaming and, <laughs> and growling. Might be catching up with me. Uh, but I've been having trouble with the laryngitis off and on for it. Yeah, I mean, it's okay for you, but I'm trying to sing. <laughs> and I appreciate your encouragement. <laughs> Try a cough drop. <laughs> See what that does. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, for about three or four months, uh, <laughs> off and on, it just comes and goes, and I can't figure it out. So if you've got a throat specialist out there, come talk to me. <laughs> All right. If you know much about my career, you'll know that I did start singing and recording country music, straight country. <laughs> Right, I'm in a country territory. So, um, and of course I still do country. But the things lately that have kind of put me back on the map um, have been the early rock stuff that I, I did. Being acclaimed as the first woman to record rock and roll. So I'm kind of Well, I thought the guys didn't have to have it all to themselves. So they just jumped right in there. But I'm going to throw in a country song. If you don't like it or don't care for that type of it, just throw it right back out. But it's a short song, so stay with it. Here we go. Let's try it. Thank you. 
from high school, ready to go on the road, make my millions, you know, set the world on fire. Uh, it didn't happen quite like that. I'm still working on the first million. <laughs> but uh, something good really did happen on that very first tour. I met and worked with Elvis Presley. And I had the privilege of working with him in 1955, part of that, and 56, and into 57. So we became good friends. Uh, we had a lot in common. We dated. We, uh, uh, you know, movie and a, a afterwards for dinner. And usually my dad was along, and Scotty and Bill. It was kind of a family thing. But once in a while, uh, we could uh, slip off by ourselves for a little while. So, now, don't get ahead of me, y'all. Goodness gracious, where are your minds? <laughs> I'm talking 1955 now. Yeah, my dad was with me. So, but, so, uh, yeah, he asked me to be his girl one day and gave me his ring and I wore it around my neck for about a year. So, uh, but the thing about that uh, particular time, he is the one that talked me into trying this new kind of music that didn't even have a name yet. It wasn't rockabilly, it wasn't rock and roll, it was just Elvis's kind of music. <laughs> And so I said, well, I love it, you know, it's my generation, I was 17, 18. And uh, I said, but I can't sing that, I'm just a country singer. He said, sure you can, I know you can, and you need to. So it was through his encouragement that I started recording the rockabilly and 50s rock music. And I didn't have a, much of a hit or a career on it in those days. But now, I'm enjoying the benefits of it. Because in, in the year 2009, I stood on the stage in Cleveland, Ohio, being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame.
Friday night, Friday night. Thank you so much. And uh, my heart was just full of thanks to Elvis again for giving me that push and encouragement to do it. So I, I like to pay tribute to him on every show that I can. And uh, I take, I've taken a song, of, a favorite of mine, out of my tribute album to Elvis. This one right here. Woo! So lonely, I could die. Although it's always crowded, you still can find some room for broken hearted lovers to cry there in the gloom. from my era in the audience are saying who? <laughs> Who'd she say? And the young ones are oh yeah. <laughs> Little uh, generation gap there but anyway yeah he's about the hottest rock star on the planet at the moment. And him calling me I was quite flattered to say the least and he wanted to produce an album on me on his record label, Third Man. So we got to work on it. We made an album that I'm very proud of, and I believe he's proud of it too. He pushed me real hard, and just, I mean, every song, push, give me a little more, Wanda, come on. I said, Jack, you're wanting that 18-year-old girl you've got the records of. <laughs> That ain't gonna happen now, probably. <laughs> but you know what? He kept pushing me anyway. And I said, I, Jack, what you've done is push me right into the 21st century. <laughs> so we're gonna pull out some songs from the album, and he named it The Party Ain't Over. Right, let's go.
from the album is one I wasn't sure that I should record. I wasn't sure I even wanted to. That's pretty cool. But Jack said, no, it, it'll be all right. He changed some words for me. I'm speaking of an Amy Winehouse song. So you might know what I'm talking about. I said, I think this one is just a little too sexually explicit for me. <laughs> Besides that, it isn't even age-appropriate. <laughs> but he talked me into That's doing it, and this was the result. I wound up loving this song. I like to sing it, too.
Okay, here's one from the past that Jack likes, and I like it too. I still love this one. Be right here.
Yeah. 